I would like to welcome everybody to uh, Fair and Grind, if you haven't been here before. Uh, this is something new that we started in December after we took over Fair and Grind. It's something we're calling the Fair and Grind Dialogues. And the first Tuesday of every month, we have uh, lured someone else in to talk about some subject. And in this case, I have to start with an apology, because this is actually the second time Marissa has been here. It turned out probably in my confusion or whatever, she showed up Oops. once ready to go, and it was the wrong day or something. <laughs> and, uh, so when I called her about uh, 10 days ago and said, well, I just want to make sure you're ready. She just been ready, been there. Where were you? Um, but uh, Come on in. We got room. There's a chair right over there. There's a chair back here. Thank you. Sorry. Never. We've gone from big room to small room because we've had from 10 people to 50. And you never know. And then, uh, as an old organizer, I always you know, go small room to big room. Not a big room, a small room. Bob knows me a little bit too well. Um, we also have, if people are familiar with the uh, artist collective at uh, Canal Place called Rhino. They have their monthly meetings here the first Tuesday of every month. And, you know, so we're sort of navigating this. Next year we'll be on a different day. I first was introduced to Arissa and her book by Bob Tucker. And I'm not going to go through why he would tell me or how I know him because it's just better left unsaid. But uh, he and I worked for many years together in some things that, uh, you know, uh, help build organizations in serious ways that I cared about, on the living wage campaign, organizing city workers, and back when the pre-Nagan mayor was here. Again, what was his name? Uh, that was that one. Yeah, yeah, that fellow. The Urban League president. And uh, he, he told me about this book, gave me the pamphlet, and said this is something that he really was proud of. He'd gone to a meeting, and it stayed in my mind. And I ran into a... Uh, a piece that Arissa had written in the Tribune about uh, A.P. Trudeau and his time. And I thought, you know what, we never, this is a good excuse to get her over here. I'll finally hear what Bob was talking about and he was so excited about, partially because he was there, but partially just because these are important parts of New Orleans history that are uh, perhaps never well known, but uh, in some cases, you know, heartily concealed, but they need to be discussed and they need to be part of a dialogue and uh, it's actually fantastic to see how many people did come out. So with that introduction and our thanks for Arissa being here and we have uh, others here as well that she was going to integrate in a free uh, ma multimedia presentation it looks like. So Arissa, the way we work, you take as much time as you want and I know you'll be open to questions and whatever people want to talk about. Okay, thanks. It's just great to see everybody here. Um, when Wade asked me to do this and sort of talk about civil rights history at this time, I said, well, you know, I'm not a historian. I really can't do that. I know pretty much everything there is to know about the New Orleans Black Panther story. But, um, you know, so I got a real historian to come in. Keith Medley's book is fabulous. We as Friedman, it's about the Plessy versus Ferguson story and so Keith is going to give us a little setup. He's going to, if, if everybody has a copy of this, he's going to take us through the 60s, what was happening. And then Bob was, um, you know, he's one of the main heroes in my book. He, he was actually, what, 24 years old and working for Moon Landrew as his assistant in 1970 when, when all this happened. And I, I, I can tell you a little bit more about how he helped me with the interviews and we got to know each other as, as a result of new columns about the Panthers. Um, and then Royce helped a lot with the book. I'm going to read something from Larry Preston Williams. You remember how you just ran <laughs> into school with Larry? You went to school with Larry. Well, Every, everybody Larry, knew Larry, you an undercover oh, cop who was, uh, uh, he had some amazing stories about not only uh, infiltrating the Panthers, but also uh, they were they were spying on the the mafia and the Ku Klux Klan and the right. Nazi Party in New Orleans. So right, they knew, they knew it all the way. Right, and that's all in the book too. Now, Royce, you know, we've got so many incredible artists here. Do, have you all all seen his All on a Mardi Gras Day? Mm -hmm. This is on Black Mardi Gras. There's some copies of it that are for sale out there. It's, it is just a fabulous doc documentary every time I look at it. I see 
more that I had forgotten about. Come on in. And um, I actually, I'm so glad to see young people here because, you know, probably most of you don't even know about the 1970 Black Panther story. So what I'll do is I'll let Keith kind of set us up with some context and, and then I'll read a little bit out of the book and I want y'all to chime in just, you know, wherever you want to. And what I'd like to sort of focus on in our discussion tonight, if, if you can be giving us some thought as we, as we talk tonight, is I want to look at race relations in the 60s and 70s here, you know, from the point of view of what we're going to be talking about, and see what you think is the same and what's changed in, in terms of today, and see what lessons we can take from the past, because I think our problems here are, you know, so enormous today that unless we make some, like, warp speed changes here in race relations, um, you know, we're probably all doomed. <laughs> oh, 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 that's, 